Right, so today we're going to talk about um, how you would pass JavaScript variables to Python using JSON. So we face a scenario where we're developing a website, and in Python actually there is a live mission package called Flask, which we're going to be using in this scenario. We'll come to that in a while, show you how that all, all comes into this. And essentially you have built a website and you want it to capture information from the website, pass it into Python using JSON. So how do we do that? So let's actually just see what's happened first on the website. So we have a website here browser. Uh, I'm gonna call, we're just gonna put in some data here, right? So let's call T I C L. Okay. What happens here is this is the pop-up happens here. Let's uh, ignore that. I'll just do that just so I know it works. That's happening here is capturing the data. Okay, so within the web browser in the background, this is actually your JSON data. And it's this it's basically it's JSON string. And what it does every time is when the website's running, you put something in the box, hit the button, it runs a function in the background, and then basically it captures it within the JSON file. Okay, so if we go, uh, okay, if we do this, pop up again, okay, again, it's capturing first name Dublin, last name Ireland. So essentially what we do now is get that from here on the web browser into a Python. How do we do that? So let's hop over to the Python code, all right? So, over here, just to show you, as the, the script is running, it basically shows you um, what was entered. It runs the function and then it basically shows, it comes in as a class string and then is converted to the dictionary. So that's the end product. We have it in Python, but how do we do that? Well, first things we want to understand is, I'm just going to bring this down a bit, is just the, there's two bits to this. There's the index.html file. And then there's the app.py. Now the app.py file is the actual file that you need to run, which opens, creates the web site, opens up this file, then it runs all the functionality to capture the data, process it, send it over via JSON to Python into the Python and create a Python dictionary. But we just want to show you the, the HTML side first is the website file. You have to create that first in order to get it into Python. Now, in saying that, it doesn't have to be HTML. Um, there could be other uh, web browsing methodologies used. I'm just using it today as an example, but essentially should be very close to the same thing, whatever way you use it. So basically I have our header file here. So that's just your data analytics, Ireland. So for those who fam aren't familiar with HTML, that just gives you this value up here, okay? And then basically gives you some paragraph here, which is there, and we go back here, this bit here. Um, then the next bit it has labels okay and it has first name last name as a label and then input type text and id four names so this is important the four there's two labels there's the f name and l name four name and last name and basically but what's very important here is their ids because the ids is what the javascript will capture uh, whatever is entered into the box and you'll see that down below now in a second and then we have a button um, basically the button uh, which is essentially this obviously Okay, essentially the button basically when it's clicked, it runs this function here, my function, and basically the function does a bit of processing on the data and then basically passes it into the, the Python. Um, so let's move down down. What it does, the next bit we're looking to do is that in order to capture the data um, as part of JSON and pass over Python, we actually need to use a piece of functionality called Ajax. And you see Ajax here, okay, that's used down here. But in order for that to work correctly, there's this piece of script that you need to just tell it to run it um, uh, so that the Ajax will actually run correctly um, and capture the data and pass it over to Python. I found that if you don't put this in, it doesn't work um, as you would like. So just something to note, if your logic's not working, just make sure you have this line in here. Um, this is just one website. There is probably a number of different ones uses. One I found it's from the Google APIs. Um, it's very handy and basically make sure, as I said, if you don't have it in, it might be one of the reasons why it's not passing the data over to Python. So that's all that is. Then the next thing is we have my function here. So my function is called when we click the button here. So you see here on the unclick event for part of the JavaScript, um, it basically says when you click the button, run this function. So this basically says, all right, go down and run this here. Okay, so what's it doing? It's basically saying, get me all the data that was passed in to these IDs, forename and last name, right? So 
and it's passing to variable. So first name, it's creating a variable here because first name and last name, and they're both linked to the ID. So earlier on, I said this is important. So there's your ID there, F name and last name. There you have them there, all right? And it's basically saying when the button's clicked, capture the values that are in those boxes. Now, it could be something, it could be empty. So that's the first thing, all right? Then what it's doing is it's with these two values, it's creating basically um, a dictionary, basically, and it's saying, okay, so like a, a JavaScript dictionary, and um, basically calling it DICT underscore values. Okay, and then the next bit on this line is creating another variable called S. Uh, what it's doing now is it's passing that dictionary, that JavaScript, into a JSON format. So as you can see, JSON not stringify, it's basically saying, make this variable here which is in the javascript format into a json format okay and basically that's all it's doing and um, so now what you have it here is a value a variable called s in json format okay all this then is doing is console log s is printing the values to the console so that's just showing it here okay that's all that is it's very straightforward uh one second now go back here and then it's giving you the alert. So that's just the pop-up window. So when you see the pop-up windows, that's all it does. So one of the things next, I wanted to go through with you very quickly, but these next lines from 28 to 32 is the bit where it's setting up this data, this JSON uh, string called S, to be, have the ability to be passed over to Python. And this is kind of the crux of it. And this is where you need to um, get this right, because I did, I was working on this and I did have slight tweaks and things need to change on until I got it right. But this essentially will get in the format that when you pass it over to Python, Python will be listening for it. And basically when it's listening for it and it recognizes it in the form that it's expecting, it will pull the data in and then it's the ability to use it in Python. And that's over here in this file. Now come to that file in two seconds, app.py, but we'll just show you here what's going on. So essentially what the Ajax is basically doing is saying, Take what we captured, S here, and send it to this, this basically, it's a, basically a page called forward slash test. Now this is a page that Python's listening uh, is set up in the background, um, and this will basically accept the data based on certain criteria be met. And so it's basically saying, send it over here as type post, and then basically send it as application.json, and then basically just make sure that it's in the string of on JSON format. So now what's happened is on the web page, you've entered data in the boxes, click the button, capped them in JavaScript, JavaScript um, values are then converted to a JSON format. Then the JSON format has been captured uh, by Ajax and sent uh, as a post over to this page here called forward slash test. So let's go over to the Python now, because then we need to see what the Python is doing with it to process it, okay? So here is your Python script. And this, this, the two, the two files, index.html and py, this app.py are both equally important, but this is the one that runs the whole program. Um, so as I said earlier on, we have a web page. This is all built within Flask. So these first four, basically four lines are setting up the web page to be generated to run in Flask, okay? And Flask is the Python package to basically lay to run and create websites, all right? So the first thing it's doing, so that's the first line. So the first thing here is you have an at app.root. It's basically saying you know, the, basically the, the root, um, uh, one of the root files to, to look for um, when it's when you run the website is basically index.html. So what's happening here is within Flask, it has what they call the templates folder. And essentially in there, you would store all your website pages. So it's basically saying render this template index.html this is what I want you to use when you load up the web page. And then if there's any data that's entered on that page, capture it and send it over to me. We'll process it. So that's all that's doing. Then the next bit is basically saying, and this is where we just alluded to over here, uh, down here, okay. But essentially it has this next, next bits of lines from 16 and 24 is essentially, this is what it's basically doing is listening for some data coming in and saying, where is it coming from? Where does that data want to be sent to? So essentially saying, this is kind of its name is forward slash test, and then methods post, it receives anything that is saying, sent to forward slash test, and if it's a post. So as you can see, 
we're this Ajax is saying send it to forward slash test is type post. Okay, so that's all that's doing. So as we have already done, um, it's we've sent over the data to Ajax and said they said forward slash sent the forward slash test post. So it says right, we've received it. So it runs this function test. Okay. So in there, the first thing we're going to do is output, and we're basically creating a variable, and it says output is equal to regret gate JSON. So all it's doing basically is saying, look at what was sent, and if there was JSON sent, re um, receive it, and let's then process it. So that's why that that content type there is JSON, and it's basically saying we have sent some data, and its type is JSON. And it says, okay, great, it's JSON. So what it does basically then is it says, right, we're going to call it that print. We're going to save it in the variable output and print it output so if you look here first name dublin last name ireland first name dublin last name ireland um that's that i'll show you that in a second but the, the first name dublin last name ireland is class string okay now the json format is actually string so that is correct and basically this is obviously your types and that's just print no class string all right so the next bit we want to do then is it's in the json format still we want to create it into a format that the actual Python can use it, process and do what you want to do with it, essentially. So what we're doing is result equals json.loads output. This is now converting the JSON format into a Python dictionary. Very straightforward, one line, it's very easy. And basically, yeah, this converts it to the output. So when you look at results then down here, it's exactly the same here, first name, Dublin, last name, Ireland, but it's now it's type is slash dict and that's the python dictionary um data type okay and then this very last line here is basically return results so in essence just to recap what we've done now is we've created a true flask a web page uh, we've created a page called index.html it has the buttons um it has the the boxes for input the button to to capture the data um, and then the, the JavaScript captures what was entered into the box, converted that JavaScript to a JSON format, passed the JSON format here to the Ajax in a format that says we can pass it to another page that is waiting to accept data based on if it's sent in the correct format. Within the Python script says, right, we have a data coming here in a certain format. Does it, does it match what we're expecting? Yes, it's brought it in. It's basically then converted to a Python dictionary and we've basically printed it out. So now that's how you would then go and take anything from a website and basically pass it over to Python script and then process and do what you want to do with it in Python. So I hope you've enjoyed that today. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. We've um, first video 2022. We've a lot more coming. I've decided to in 2022 continue on what we're doing. So I'll be here, but the format I'll just expand the different languages you so while I still have Python on the website I want to maybe be more interactive with other languages so that uh, people using those languages can you learn how if they're familiar with those languages not Python how it can all be used and interactive and blended together so thanks for coming along as I said we'll catch you soon looking forward to interacting with everybody in 2022 take care and look after yourself